Hello, Jenny. How are you? Hi, teacher. How are you? Great. Ready to get started. Uh -huh. Tell me, Jenny, what did you do today? I... I was studying. Studying? Uh, okay. Studying. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, the, the listening. Mm -hmm. Stay and, home. Okay. Stay home. <laughs> hmm. And why did you didn't go to work today, Jenny? No, not yet. I didn't. I, I don't work. Ah, that's nice. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for you. But I, I, you are going to go visit your parents or no? Yes, I visit my parents, but I, I come back because I, 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 I am going to the doctor, orthopedic, orthopedic. Uh -huh. The next Monday, the next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Uh -huh. For your what happened? Why do you have to go to the orthopedic? Because I I hurt. I fall fell fall fall fall, fall, fall down mm -hmm. and I hurt my 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 ankle. Uh huh. But I I thought you recovered. No, not yet. No, yet I was one month for the stay stay easy <laughs> reposo. Ah, yeah. stay at home. Yes, take it easy. I stay at home. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. One month, but one yes. month we finish, right? Yeah, but um, I the and one the the one month finished the yesterday, but mm. doesn't have uh espacio. Ah, uh, uh, space or time? Mm -hmm. A space for for the the doctor because it's very very crowded. Oh, okay. And what did the doctor say now? When are you going to see him? The next month, Wednesday. I'm going to the doctor the next Wednesday. Next Wednesday? Uh-huh. Okay. So, in, if you go to the doctor, the doctor give you more time to stay at home or the doctor is going to give you special shoes or I, I don't know. What is the idea? I think I think maybe he a uh, may uh, send to the physiotherapy. I was physical therapy. Uh -huh. physical therapy. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. How are you? In a hurry, as as always. <laughs> in a hurry. Why in a hurry? <laughs> because uh, we have just arrived home. Oh wow! Did, did yeah. you have a nice day? You went out. You had a good time. Uh, yeah, thanks God. Yeah, yeah, better than yesterday. Okay, okay. Yes. So today you had a lot of work, Sandra, or or, or go. You went out to enjoy yourself. No, no, working, of course. <laughs> working, <laughs> yes. Always working, right? <laughs> Yeah, all the time. Okay. Anyway. Good. Andrea, Katya, Nicole, how are you? Hello, teacher. Hello, I'm... teacher. I'm fine, and you? Good, good. Hi. Hi. All right. I'm glad that all of you are here. We're getting ready to start. Remember, today we're going to go ahead and continue with our listening practice. Yesterday, we learned a little bit more, we had learned two more. So now we have four different questions for the listening. What are the four different types of questions for listening? No, remember the four types of listening? Function, question. Uh, Function, question. Good, uh-huh. 
Connecting oh. question. Good function question. Organization mm. questions. Good. Simplification questions. Simplification questions. Good. Okay. Very nice. And added to questions. Very good. So remember, each type of question has a different thing that you should be doing. Yes. Depending on the type of question is where you have to do, right? The most important is when you do the listening, you need to stay focused. Do not get distracted. Not all of the information is important, but it's important that you pay attention the entire time. Okay. So what are some of the things that we have? Well, super easy in the the idea with, for example, function questions. Function questions are going to be the idea of why, right? Why did the professor say, or what does they, what do they mean when they say that? That's the function. What's the purpose of it? Okay. Why did the professor mention this? Or why did she say that? Or why did the person say this? That is the function question. The added to questions is not so is not a lot of questions, but it's about understanding the intonation. Remember, attitude is about how does the speaker feel? Happy, sad, angry? Why is the speaker saying things like that? Those are the emotions. The organization question is, this is where they give you specific things and you have to understand in the context why it's important. Why it's important in the context is this. What is the difference between organization questions and function questions? Okay. Well, in function questions, you don't have to explain what they mean. Okay. I, all you have to say is what does the person, it's like the example. Okay. But you have to have the interpretation of it. Are they trying to tell them to, they are interested, they are sad. Are they trying to tell them they don't believe in them? Things like that. In the organization questions, you have to understand what is the function of that example? What is the purpose of the example? And the last one is connecting questions. This is the one that you had a good time yesterday, very well, where it's the main ideas, right? The things that the people talk about and the two reasons. Normally, what are the two things that they mention? Very nice because only you have to listen what each person speaks about. Now, the most important for all of them is always when you do it, make sure read the question first. Always try to read the question before you do the audios or right at the beginning. This will give you a better chance to get a better score. Okay. Any questions? The function question. Repeat, Jen. Link. Repeat all the time. The function question. Function questions. Uh -huh. Okay. So let me go back one more time. Let's take a look. Okay. Let's go back a little bit. Okay. So when we talk about function questions here, we'll go back so we can get a good idea. Make sure that we are right. Here, we're going to watch the small video one more time to clarify and to give you some examples. Hi, welcome. We're going inside the TOEFL listening section. We'll begin with the function questions. Function questions ask you to identify the particular meaning of a statement in a given context. Okay, so not, not what do they say, but why? What, what is... What is the purpose of that? That's one. For example, the meaning. Because a statement can have different meanings depending on the situation. In other words, the real meaning is different from the surface or literal meaning. For example, if you're in a room with other people and someone says, it's getting hot in here, what they might really be saying is, could someone turn on the AC? You can recognize function questions because they include phrases like, what does the professor mean when he says? Or, why does the student say? Here's a tip for building your listening skills that can also help you with function questions. When listening to a passage, ask yourself what the speaker is really doing by saying certain things. The speaker may be doing things like directing, recommending, complaining, agreeing or disagreeing, 
questioning, or confirming. When you know these types of intentions and that they often happen beneath the surface of what is said, they can help you identify the function of what is said more easily. So, in other words, the idea of the function question is to get the speaker understand what they say, but translate what is the real meaning. So, as an example, when you go to a restaurant and someone says, oh, I heard, I heard the tacos are delicious. What are they saying? Are they saying that they heard the tacos are delicious? Or are they saying that they would like to try the tacos? This is the idea of the function question. What is they trying to communicate? Is that okay, Jenny? Yes. Yes? Okay. So remember, the most important for the function question is what is the speaker really telling you? Not literally, but what is the speaker trying to tell you by using other words? As for example, when someone asks me, uh, how old are you? And I say, uh, I have one year less than 60. No, because that is the literal. Okay. So that is, you are 59. So no, he's not interpreting. So when someone asks you, how old are you? And you say, oh, um, I am younger than Jesus. Oh. <laughs> oh. So, uh -huh. so what yeah. is the person saying? They, one, they, uh -huh, you are less than 2000 years old or two, they don't want to give you the answer, right? This is the idea. Mm. What, this is the mm. function question. Oh, I'm older than Jesus. Okay, there you go. Uh huh. Okay. And then that's it. Okay. So the idea of the function question is the interpretation of the purpose. Okay. So okay. all of the function questions are going to help you because they're not going to be direct. You have to understand why they say that. Okay. So if I am speaking with Jenny, I say, hmm, um, did, uh, do you have water in your house? Oh, the speaker, why did I mention that? A, the speaker wants to know if there's water in the house. B, the speaker wants to know if Jenny took a shower. C, Je this is the idea. You, ah, this is the idea of why do you say that? Not the literal, but what is the meaning behind it? Oh, yes. Or sometimes uh, we say, do you have water in your house? It's because I want to go to get a uh, uh, to take a, a shower there because in my house there is no water. Exactly, exactly. Something like that is the idea of the function questions to interpret what is the real idea for it. All right. Okay. All right. Good. It's kind of like when you say, "Oh, uh, do you have money?" Why? Because I want to know if you have money, or two. I want to know if you can lend me money. Okay. <laughs> this is the idea of the function. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's okay, guys, or any questions? No, it's clear. It's okay. Now, yeah. now it's okay. <laughs> okay, all right, good. So in this moment, we are going to practice the questions from the exam remember today wednesday we are going to do the listening practice test two and another yes. so let me share with you the idea with our partners you're going to take a moment remember always read the questions first and then listen always read the question first and then listen for the six questions that we have oh sorry for the seven questions that we have Sometimes. all of them are different types we have business. This is a business study class, right? This is a normal conversation. Here we have a campus police station here. And this one is going to be for the architecture class. So why all of these are with school? Remember, the TOEFL is academic, is not social. The exam is academic. 
So all of the ideas and the questions are for academic functions, not for social, not going to a party, no, what's your favorite food? This is never going to be on the TOEFL. Okay, these types of questions will never be there because it's not the function of the TOEFL. The function of the TOEFL is to have strictly the idea for having academic. Okay, are we ready? Yes, sir. Yes? Yes. Okay. yes More than ready. Oh. More than ready. <laughs> Excellent. That's what I love. More than ready. Okay. <laughs> let's go with our partners and let's make sure that we do our best. Bunny, are you having some problems? Okay, if you have some problems, let me share with you my screen and the audio so that you can practice them. Bunny? Manny, are you there? Okay. Manny, are you having problems connecting? Yes, I'm getting issues with my internet connection. Okay. Maybe me... because it's raining here. Oh, probably, probably. Let me try sending you again. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, good. Now you were able to connect. Let's take a look and do the listening together then. Listen to part of a lecture in an architecture class. So, now I'd like to focus on the Prairie School of Architecture which developed the most significant architectural style in North America in the first decades of the 20th century. The main influences on this style came from several places. For example, the philosophy and practice of the architect Louis Sullivan. Now you may remember that Sullivan liked to say that form follows function. In other words, the shape and structure of a building should follow, should, should depend on the purpose, the intended use of the building. There was also the English arts and crafts movement. That was important around this time too. That was a second important influence. And I should mention traditional oriental themes, which also played an important part in the Prairie School ideas. Now, the students and followers of Sullivan the most famous of whom was Frank Lloyd Wright, developed these themes and ideas into a truly American style, a style expressing a belief in the unity of mankind and nature. Now, when people think of architecture, they, they often think of large public buildings. But most of the effort of the Prairie School was devoted to domestic buildings, mainly houses for well-to-do private citizens. So, can anyone here describe to me any of the important features of prairie school houses? Didn't they mostly have long horizontal lines rather than a vertical appearance? 
Yes, yes, they did. That's certainly part of it. We can say that the most visible external features of this architecture were horizontal lines and heavy roofs projecting away from the walls. The shapes were designed to both harmonize with and reflect the broad, flat prairies of the Midwestern United States. But somewhat ironically, I suppose, most of these houses were actually built in more urban areas, especially in the Chicago suburbs, rather than on the prairies themselves. Okay, now, what about the insides, the interiors? Didn't they want to do away with small rooms? Well, in a sense, yes. Um, there was certainly an emphasis on keeping the number of separate rooms to a minimum, um, opening up living space, and uh, designing internal walls so that the light and view created a sense of unity. The idea was to reduce the number of interior corners typical of traditional European houses. See, prairie school architects thought of this of this traditional home as confining, both physically and, and also spiritually. So, by ridding the inside of houses of, of so many rooms and corners and walls, they hoped to create a feeling of, of movement and freedom. Their ideal of beauty was to try to make the living space more compatible with human proportions and living requirements. Often, large fireplaces were built at the center of the overall design rather than attached to an outside wall. And this gave additional structural support to the building, so it further allowed the building to get by with fewer interior walls. Now, let me add that in line with their belief in the importance of nature, these architects related the interiors to the surrounding natural landscape by their use of windows that were continuous ribbons of glass. So, in that way, the outside and inside of the houses were more closely related. Other ways they suggested the importance of nature were in designing terraces projecting from the external walls with parapets, walls that were used as, as planting boxes for flowers and shrubs, and deep roof overhangs that led the eye toward the horizon. Of course, not all prairie school houses had all these features, but certainly we can say that there was a general tendency among these architects to provide their designs with many of them. Okay, so now we've discussed overall structure. Now what about ornamentation? Uh, didn't they reject almost all decorative elements? Well, not entirely. Although it's true they like to keep things simple. Again, this was in line with their opposition to what they perceived as, as the fussiness of more traditional housing styles. We can say that ornamentation was only permitted if it, if it complemented, if it, if it blended in with the overall expression and feeling of the building. So, to this end, the Prairie School architects tended to use simple, unmixed, natural materials, sometimes with geometric or oriental designs. For example, many of the prairie houses had a turned-up roof edge, reminiscent of traditional Japanese houses. Okay, so finally, I'd like to mention that these architects usually designed all the furniture that went with each house. Each piece of furniture, whether built-in or freestanding, was carefully crafted to fit in with the overall feeling of the house. Again, natural materials were preferred and restful horizontal lines were emphasized. Okay, so what can be said about the nature prairie of school architecture? Choose two options, A and B, A and C, A and D, or B and C. Number three. Why does the professor mention traditional houses? To contrast Japanese architecture design with the prairie design? To show the relationship between Japanese use of space and overall ornamentation? To give an example of how turned up roof edges don't blend in with the horizontal lines of the flat prairies? To show how 
the influence of oriental things was expressed in the prairie school design. Let's listen to the next one. Number four, what can be inferred about the student? Yes, how can I help you? Yeah, uh, I think my car has been stolen. Okay, can you give me the details? Yeah, uh, it's a 1999 four-wheel drive blue Subaru. Okay, and when and where did you last see it? Well, this morning I parked it in front of Lacey Hall. Let me check our records. Ah, it appears your car was in a faculty-only zone. Yeah, I know but the handicapped parking spaces were all taken, and I had to find a place so I could get easy access to my classes. Uh-huh. But since you don't have a faculty parking sticker, your car was towed. I was hoping that because I had a handicap sticker, it would be okay. There may have been a complaint from a faculty member. Well, sometimes that happens when a professor can't get to work on time because someone who isn't faculty is parked in faculty parking. So the tow truck was called. Okay, um, how do I get my car back? Well, when a vehicle has to be towed, the owner must pay for the towing and storage fees before the car can be taken. And I'm sorry to say, there's also a parking fine. And how much will all that be? Um, the towing fee is $90, and there's a storage fee of $10 per day. So it'd be a good idea to pick up your car today, if possible. The parking fine is 50, but if you pay within seven days, the fine is reduced to 20. I think, well, all this is very unfair. If the university is going to charge so much, they should have more spaces. My car gets towed because the handicapped parking spaces are full. One of the cars didn't even have a handicapped sticker. Uh, well, you know, don't you, that you do have the right to appeal. Since you believe that circumstances exist that may excuse you from certain university regulations. Oh, so how do I go about doing that? Well, first, you write a letter of appeal. Well, that can be done online. You can go to the University Traffic Regulations page. You know the university homepage? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, in your letter, explain the situation and why you believe the ticket was unfair. You'll get a letter immediately saying that your case is being reviewed. Later, you'll get a reply stating whether or not your appeal is accepted. The fine is put on hold as soon as the letter of appeal has been received. If the charge isn't dropped, then you have seven days to pay up or to make a further appeal. Okay. Thank you for your help. Okay. Good luck. So, what can be inferred about the student? He didn't know he was parking illegally. He lives in a student dormitory, he uses a wheelchair, or he drives to campus. The next one. Number five and six. What does the officer mean when she says this? And the student will... Listen again to part of the conversation, then answer the question. Well, when a vehicle has to be towed, the owner must pay for the towing and storage fees before the car can be taken. And I'm sorry to say, there's also a parking fine. What does the officer mean when she says this? And I'm sorry to say, Who's your answer? Number six, the student will write a letter of appeal, pay the fine immediately, park in the faculty parking lot, or request a handicapped sticker. And our last question.
What does the professor mention the introductory of your machinery? Oh, let me try that one more. Okay, so we've outlined a number of techniques for effective decision making. Uh, now let's focus on one approach to figuring out how to uh, make good business decisions. Okay, so uh, one way of deciding whether to go ahead with some new investment project is to perform what's known as CBA, or cost-benefit analysis. CBA can estimate and total up the money values of both the benefits and costs to a community, institution, or business to establish whether an investment choice is worthwhile. So let's assume you've generated solutions to a business problem and have thought really carefully about which way to go. You think you have the best solution available, but before going ahead with any investment decision, what you need to do is add up the value of the benefits as well as the costs of this action. Now, uh, what I mean by costs and benefits here is always, it's, it's always expressed in monetary terms. So, um, we find out what the cost is in money terms and also what the benefits might be also in money terms. Uh, then, we subtract the costs from the benefits and we can choose whether to go ahead or not. All right, in simple terms, costs tend to be what we spend on something, um, say for example, a new piece of machinery. And, uh, and benefits are uh, what advantages, expressed in money units, we get over the lifetime of that machinery because of having purchased it as opposed to, well, <laughs> not having it or having some alternative. Um, in, in such a case, we can figure out a fairly simple CBA just by looking at expenses and uh, then subtracting them from the savings brought about by uh, improved uh, the improvements of introducing the machinery that would include things like the savings met by not having to pay salaries to employees who previously did the work of the machine we could add the fact that the machines make fewer mistakes <laughs> we hope than human employees so there will be fewer rejected products. But on the other hand, we have to factor in the cost of running the machines, uh, such as maybe the increased electricity bill, the cost of repairs, and of course, the cost of training someone to operate the new equipment. So that much is pretty straightforward. But we also have to think about less tangible, less visible costs and benefits. Cost-benefit analysis really only works if we're careful to add in all the costs and benefits. Uh, costs, especially, are sometimes hidden. For example, in, in paying for this new stuff, we're taking liquid money and spending it, right? So we're no longer paid interest from having that money in a bank or otherwise invested. Okay, so we have to subtract that loss from the benefit side. Then, suppose also that the new machines are noisy. That means soundproofing. That's a cost. Or, or will it take up more space than the replaced workers and therefore require an addition to the building? These are less obvious costs, but they should be factored in to get an accurate picture. When we do CBA in a more public domain, uh, say, on the building of a new road, the calculations can become even more tricky. Although there's some impressive software nowadays that helps us out, of course. So, how do we measure the benefits here? Does the road improve or worsen people's lives? A new road may, for example, uh, damage some wildlife habitat, or some residential community may be inconvenienced by the noise or air pollution. On the other hand, the new road could improve property values by decreasing commuting times. Um, it could also save human lives since it's safer than the old road.
In practice, CBA tries to put a value on all these things, although a lot of people may not like what it says. What it does is try to find out how people really value these apparently subjective things by looking at the financial choices they're prepared to make to gain a benefit or to avoid something on the cost side. In this way, we can put a monetary figure on all benefits and costs. Of course, these calculations can be complex and sometimes controversial, but I want to point out that CBA is a powerful tool and perhaps the most rational way of choosing whether to go ahead with a complex investment decision. Okay, that should be the last one. Why does the professor mention the introductory, intro, sorry, why does the professor mention the introduction of machinery? To underline the importance of monetary units, to help explain the cost and benefits are worked out, and to show that many machines are too expensive or to emphasize the financial side of the business decision. Okay, welcome back. Um, I know that you maybe you felt the time is a little short, but remember the time is exact on the listenings. You have time for the listenings, a few minutes for the analysis, a few seconds for the analysis, and then the next listening, okay? So let's take a look and see what you came up with with your partners. Number two, what is the best or what can be said about the Nature Prairie School architecture? Which were the best options? A and C. Letter B. Letter B. A, a and C. A and C. A and C. Okay. Good. And why did the professor mention Japanese tradition or traditional Japanese houses? Um, to show how the influence of Oriental films was expressed in the pretty school designs. Okay. D. D. Great. And what can be inferred about the student? He drives to campus. Okay, he drives to campus. Okay. All right, we're going to go work on that. And five, what does the officer mean when she says this? Letter B, she's empathizing with the student situation. Great. And what will the student do next? Um, write a letter. Letter A. Write a letter of appeal. Okay. And the last part. Why does the professor mention the introduction of machinery? Letter B. Letter B. To help mm -hmm. explain how, co how costs and the benefits has worked out. All right. Very nice. So we have a lot of different things. Number one, we know from yesterday, which was letter C. Number two, from today, letter B. Number three, letter D for the Japanese houses. Number four, the student drives to campus. Number five, uh, he says she is emphasizing with the student situation. Six, a letter of appeal. And the last one was to help, sorry, to help explain how costs and benefits are worked out. Okay, as you can see, the listening is only one section of the TOEFL, but imagine here in the class is the short version. This is the short version. Imagine you have to do this exact activities for about 40 to 50 minutes. That is the important part to be able to get that, okay? So I'm going to share with you a link. Please copy or please open up the link so that we can do the next exercise. Ah, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Listening section directions. The listening section. Listen to a conversation between us. Okay. Everybody open up the link. 
Sure. And, and, and this opportunity, I didn't finish the exercise. But um, uh, we, we waste time. I use time on time. I don't know what happened, but I didn't finish. I didn't finish to listen the audios. I don't know. Is this right? It's on time. I don't know. No, it means you took too much time to answer. Oh. If you didn't finish, because I played the audios exactly, exactly with 15 seconds for you to answer each question. 15 seconds after each audio, you had to answer the question. So if you didn't finish the audios, it means that you would not finish on the exam because oh, okay. in the exam you have the audios and you have less time between answering. You don't have 15. So the important is, Walter, you have to learn to make a decision faster. Yeah. You have to yeah. make, uh, I think, no, I think, I don't think, no. I know yeah. the answer is this. Boom. The next. Okay. I know the answer is this and next. Don't worry. Okay. In this moment, you have another opportunity. Today, we're going to do the next one. We're going to do another listening. We're going to do the TOEFL, the actual TOEFL exam practice. In this moment, you're going to click in continue. And in the continue part, you will be able to do all of the things the same. Don't start yet. Don't start the same like in the TOEFL exam. When you click, as you said in the exam, Boom, begin, two, 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 and then it measures and measures and measures. Are we ready? Okay. Yes? Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Remember, make your decisions quickly. Very good idea, but make your decisions quickly. This is the most important. Okay. Give me one second. Let's make sure we have everybody. Okay. Then... Let's go. Listening section directions. The listening section of the TOEFL IBT test measure. Listen to a conversation between a student and a professor. Hi, Professor Mason. Do you have a minute? Yes, of course, Eric. I think there was something I wanted to talk to you about, too. Probably my late essay. Ah, uh, that must have been it. I thought maybe I'd lost it. No, I'm sorry. Actually, it was my computer that lost it, the first draft of it. And well, anyway, I finally put it in your mailbox yesterday. Oh, and I haven't checked the mailbox yet today. Well, I'm glad it's there. I'll read it this weekend. Well, sorry again. Say, I can send it to you by email, too, if you like. Great. I'll be interested to see how it all came out. Right. Now, um, I just overheard some graduate students talking. Something about a party for Dean Adams? A retirement party, yes. All students are invited. Wasn't there a notice on the anthropology department's bulletin board? Uh, I don't know, but I wanted to offer to help out with it. You know, whatever you need. Dean Adams, well, I took a few anthropology classes with her, and they were great, inspiring. And well, I just wanted to pitch in. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you, Eric. But it'll be pretty low-key. Nothing flashy. That's not her style. So there's nothing? No, we'll have coffee and cookies, maybe a cake, but actually a couple of the administrative assistants are working on that. You could ask them, but I think they've got it covered. Okay. Actually, oh, no, never mind. What is it? Well, it's nothing to do with the party, and I'm sure there are more exciting ways you could spend your time, but we do need some help with something. We're compiling a database of articles the anthropology faculty has published. There's not much glory in it, but we're looking for someone with some knowledge of anthropology who can enter the articles. I hesitate to mention it, but I don't suppose this is something you would... No, that sounds kind of cool. I'd like to see what they're writing about. Wonderful.
I think there was something I wanted to talk to you about too. Probably not the no, I'm sorry. Actually, it was my computer that lost it. The first one to the and well, anyway, it's probably for the third one last history. Um, I just overheard some graduate students talking. Something about a party for Dean Adams? A retirement party, yes. All students are invited. Wasn't there a notice on the anthropology department's bulletin board? Uh, I don't know, but I wanted to offer to help out with it. You know, whatever you need. Dean Adams, well, I took a few anthropology classes with her, and they were great, inspiring. And, well, I just wanted to pitch in. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you, Eric, but it'll be pretty low-key. Nothing flashy. That's not her style. So there's nothing? No, we'll have coffee and cookies. Maybe a cake, but actually a couple of the administrative assistants are working on that. You could ask them, but I think they've got it covered. Okay. Actually, oh, no, never mind. What is it? Well, it's nothing to do with the party, and I'm sure there are more exciting ways you could spend your time, but we do need some help with something. We're compiling a database of articles the anthropology faculty has published. <sighs> There's not much glory in it, but we're looking for someone with some knowledge of anthropology who can enter the articles. I hesitate to mention it, but... I don't suppose this is something cookies, maybe a cake, but actually a couple of the administrative assistants are working on that. You could ask them, but I think they've got it covered. Okay. Actually, oh, no, never mind. What is it? Well, it's nothing to do with the party, and I'm sure there are more exciting ways you could spend your time, but we do need some help with something. We're compiling a database of articles the anthropology faculty has published. There's not much glory in it, but we're looking for someone with some knowledge of anthropology who can enter the articles. I hesitate to mention it, but I don't suppose this is something you would... No, that sounds kind of cool. I'd like to see what they're writing about. Wonderful. And there are also some unpublished studies. D did you know Dean Adams did a lot of field research in Indonesia? M most of it hasn't been published yet. No, like what? Well, she's really versatile. She just spent several months studying social interactions in Indonesia, and she's been influential in ethnology. Oh, and she's also done work in South America that's closer to biology, especially with speciation. Uh, not to seem uninformed. Well, how species form. Y you know, how two distinct species form. What do we leave? What do you leave to have a light, a light assignment? To find out about Yao's in the department, to discuss Dean Adams' current research, or to volunteer to help organize an event. Jenny, I can I can hear I the 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 audio, Sandra. Really? No, nothing. I I try to put in my phone now. Oh my god. What about you, um Katya? Katya? Oh. I don't know, really. Nothing flashy. That's not her style. So there's nothing? No, we'll have coffee and cookies. Maybe a cake, but actually a couple of the administrative assistants. Well, we have to do that. Uh, it's okay, Vanessa. What do you think about Vanessa? Okay, next one. Why in the chat? That's okay. Why does the professor refuse the man's offer to help with the party? Mm. Um, 
I don't know. What do you think, Daniel? I want to answer. Hey, guys. Class. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, I believe he's... Um, he heard other students discussing it. I don't know. The number three. What do you think, Jenny? I, 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 I. I didn't hear anything. That is a problem. Yeah. Katia. Katia. Number one. One. To number describe one. members. Okay. Next. Okay. We Listen can... again to part of the conversation, then answer the question. There's not much glory in it, but we're looking for someone with some knowledge of anthropology who can enter the articles. I hesitate to mention it. Thanks. Daniel Owenes. Yes, I think the, the first one to express the... The first one is okay. Okay, I see that everybody was able to finish this time, except for one group. One group had a little bit of difficulty where the members couldn't hear. Now, this is some of the issues that maybe you are going to have when you're doing the test, but it's good. It's good that we practice now. Imagine this is just one listening of all of the different types of listening, and they don't have the different, but they include all of the types of things that we practiced this week content, uh, interpretation, the meaning, the, all of the different types of questions, as you see, they mix them into one listening, right? Okay. How did you do? How did you feel? Sometimes there is too much information <laughs> in this kind of questions, for example, Always, always they give you more information than you need. This is the idea. Yes, because, Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yes, because for one listening, we had to answer like two or three questions. So we had to pay attention to the details. Yes. And like to retain information. Yes. Now, this is the difference. When you do the online test, online is like that. You need to have a paper. You need to have something to take notes to help you, right? Because you don't have it. But if when you go and you do the paper test and you go in person, you see all of the questions bef while you are listening. So you know the questions. So it's advantage oh. and disadvantage. Those are the differences. It's okay, the difference? Okay, yeah. Okay, so remember, online like that, listen, and then the questions. But 
in person, you have the questions and then the listening. So mm, depends on you, what is best for you. And the same for technical problems, right? Oy, I didn't listen. I this thing mm, that is is too bad <laughs> because it's online. Begin the exam is with time. Okay. Good. Now we're gonna have. I'm gonna send you one more link, and it's super easy. Where you might not have time to finish it, but it will give you a better idea of the one, like when you go and do it in person. Now is the second type. Okay, there is the link. Okay, we're ready? Yes. Okay. Today, we're going to look at the life and some of the works of one of America's finest modern female poets, Sylvia Plath. At the time of her death in 1963, Sylvia Plath was on the verge of the critical success and recognition that she had sought for most of her life. Her first novel, The Bell Jar, had just been published, and the publication of her collection of poems, Ariel, had just been agreed. These poems, which were mostly written during the last year of her life, chronicle the traumatic developments taking place in her personal life and were to make for her a reputation as a first-rate poet. But it wasn't until 1982, almost 20 years after her death, that her posthumously published Collected Poems won the Pulitzer Prize for Literature. Since this time, the fascination about Sylvia Platz collect poems, Sylvia husband, Susan Bassett, Bassnet, so, so Sylvia's work, Sylvia's brother, Sylvia's flat time at college was difficult because in 1953, Sylvia, what does the lecture imply when she said? Very few mother poets have captured the popular. Four, they were recognized as being of any importance. Sylvia Plath was born in Robinson Memorial Hospital in Boston, October 27, 1932. She was the firstborn child of Otto and Aurelia Plath, both highly educated academic people. Her father, Otto, was a professor of biology at Boston University, but her mother had been subjugated into a domestic role as housewife, despite her level of education. Her father was not too pleased with the birth of his daughter and demanded that his wife have a son within the next two years. Amazingly enough, his wife obliged by giving birth to a son almost exactly two years later. This domineering father figure became a common theme that recurred throughout Plath's writing. With the birth of her brother, Sylvia had to work much harder to win her father's attention and approval. When in 1936 Plath's father became ill, access to him became even more restricted, and Plath's main means of getting attention from her father was by achieving academic success. This Three, a movie was made about her life and her intense relationship with husband and fellow poet Ted Hughes. To understand the continued growth in interest in her work, we have to look at the issues which her life and work address. As Susan Bazinet writes in her book on women writers, dying as she did in 1963, Sylvia Plath never knew that so soon afterwards, the
Okay. I didn't finish. <laughs> we are going to stop right there. In this moment began. Remember, the idea is if you have this, don't wait to finish the listening. While you are listening, begin answering, 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 answering. Don't wait because then it's the same. You have to remember everything. No. Read, answer, read, answer. Try to find in the same moment. That way when the listening finish, you finish. Okay? Okay. okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Tomorrow we will do the final test for the midterm and then talk about our weekends. Okay? Okay. okay. Bye. Right, guys. Have a great night. Okay. Good night. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.